What an extraordinary performance you did in this movie. Thank and uh, I mean, let's just talk mother to mother. Do I need to say anything else? No. I, every, every parent I know that has seen this movie has been so affected by it. And if you could see, have, have seen all of us, most of us in the movie, our parents, um, the, the, the pain that it brings up, the questions, the, the soul searching about who you are as a human being, as a mother, what you would do for your child as a parent, uh, really tough questions. I wanted to ask you, because what it was your very initial reaction when you were approached for the role and that you read the script? Because I can't even imagine, you know, as you were just saying, like the gut instinct to it and how you would have felt reading something like this. I always say with my, with my child, and he's 12 and a half now, he's gonna be 13, I would rather him be dead than missing, really. That you don't know, if you, if you never know, I can't imagine what those parents go through, and yet Hugh had a wonderful whole Bible done of research that were, had videos on it and interviews with people who had children who had gone missing and it was incredible, and he shared that work with a lot of us, so we, we did a lot of research on that. And um, just as a mother, feeling that pain and darkness of it. And so, so for that reason, for me, it was easy to dive into the role having my own child, yeah. knowing that I probably, I would have been both. I would have been the mother who falls apart and the vigilante, or not vigilante, or the the person who really works to find my kid. Yeah, and what's really interesting is that your character in the film, you know, she, I mean, obviously just breaks down, she just loses it, she can't even get out of bed, and, but the one thing she says to Hugh Jackman, who plays your husband, is, you know, you were always there to protect us. You know, you were the guy who's supposed to make everything say, Maria, oh my God, I can't even say it without almost bursting into tears. Like, it's how we depend on our loved ones that yeah. really struck me in this film. And you can't do anything about it. Exactly. And, and also the way that Keller is so prepared for everything. When you see his basement, when you see his manliness, and of course you think he's going to protect us from everything. And then we're all human beings. We don't know what's going to happen in the next instant. And we're always surprised and, and hopefully for most people never in this way. But, but to be honest, the main reason I did the movie was because I saw Incendies, Denis Villeneuve's film, and I thought it was one of the most brilliant films I've ever seen, and said, I need to work with this director. They offered me the part, I read the script, I knew it was very painful and dark, but I loved the actors attached in the role, but then I saw his film and I was over the moon, and Roger Deakins was shooting it, who I know, and I just said, yes, I need to do this. Yeah, uh, the, good segue, because my next question was about Denis, and you know, our great, he's such a great guy, Canadian, and, and in Sundays, and I don't know if you saw Polytechnique, and he uh, always yes. goes into these you know, dark, dark places. I told him he needs to do a musical and lighten it up for the <laughs> next one, he really needs to. But what was it about this man that he just brought such depth out of you guys? I mean, he probably had to get into the trenches with you to be able to make a film like this, I would think. Do you know what it is about Denis? He organically has depth. He organically has soul and lives in a, a, a very interesting place with many different parts of himself. And he chooses actors that live in that way as well. So it's not like he has to get in the dirt and we all have to like find our emotions. We're kind of all people and actors in this film who have access to a lot of that stuff. And that's why I thought we were, think we were all brought together with Denis, but he's my top two directors that I've ever worked with. Who's I the other say. one? I'm not gonna say. Okay. Because I don't want to make anybody feel bad, but certainly <laughs> the top two, I, I thought he was extraordinary. He would let us go, and then he would give you one note, a tiny little note, that would shift things in such a way an entire scene would change and give it breadth and depth and width and um, amazing experience working with Denis. Wow, yeah. And I hope to do it more and more. I want to be in every one of his films. Okay, I'll let him know. No problem. <laughs> you got it. Yeah, I think you should be. Uh, Hugh Jackman. I mean, what can I say? Is there anything that this man cannot do? No. When you look at Les Mis, you and Les Mis, then to this, to Prisoners, you think, is that the same guy? And then Wolverine. I and mean, then Wolverine. It's an extraordinary performance. But again, I think it's because Hugh is such a soulful, centered, 
really good, self-possessed human being who knows who he is, so he can do all of these different roles. Yeah. I was saying, because for me, um, you know, knowing Hugh so well uh, and, and from all these years that I've been able to speak to him and meet him, and he's just the nicest, nicest man in the entire universe. It's not bullshit. He really is. He is the nicest <laughs> To man. watch him play this role was so disturbing for me. Uh, yet I still couldn't take my eyes off the screen the whole time. But it was really hard yeah. knowing what kind of person he is to play this kind of role. What was but it he like? really, he really, really went for it and went there. He doesn't care if anyone likes him. All he cares about is finding his daughter. And uh, a lot of us parents think we would be the same way. Yeah. And I think he took some really big, big chances in a way in this. And I think he's pretty extraordinary in it. Yeah. Um, you have another film here in the festival, Third Person, directed by Paul Haggis. Oh, another Canadian. What is it with you I and know, the Canadian? I directors? love the Canadians. <laughs> Can you just tell me briefly about what that what that is about and what you play in that? Uh, it's a romantic drama, dramedy, I think you would say, that takes place in New York, Paris, and Rome. Uh, and it's these intersecting stories, and uh, but you don't understand how they intersect till the end. And we filmed it in Rome in November, which is extraordinary. Paul and I have been to Italy a couple of times together just as friends. We've been friends for a long time, but never worked together. So this is the first time we worked together, and we happened to shoot in Rome. So it was fantastic. Yeah, tough life. Yeah, I feel it was bad. Rough. Yeah, I feel rough on you. No. But I can't wait to see the film. I haven't seen it. I've just heard great things about it. Oh, I'm sure it is great. I mean, my goodness, with that cast and, and him for sure. Yeah. Uh, what is it, Maria, when you when you get a script now these days? That you know, you've done such great work over the years, and I'm a huge fan from ER, so I just have to tell you that. Thank but you. I, but what is it when you get something, and you know, what is it now that says, okay, I'm gonna do that one? There's a couple of things now, and it changes as I get older. It's funny. Yeah. Lately, the last uh, year or two, um, I had, a, I had a, a, a health issue, for instance, this summer. And I thought during this time when I was recovering, I thought, you know, I want to do things that are going to give great feeling to the world, inspire the world. So my next project, I read the script. It's called McFarland. Disney's doing it. It's based on a true story. I bawled my eyes out at the end. It was so moving. So I thought, I want to do that. That's going to bring people some inspiration and joy. And then the film I'm doing after that, An Affair, based on the French film An Affair, is romantic and gorgeous and, um, you know, good stuff to put in the world. That's what I want to do right now.